Built, not bought. The philosophy of the kit car community. Individuals who embody the philosophy of building rather than purchasing. When the pursuit of an authentic experience transcends mere convenience. Regardless of the chosen model, after dedicating time and effort, confronting engineering challenges, chasing down gremlins, and occasionally With a little bit of luck. the individual achieves the realization of their own custom car. Kit cars encompass a diverse range of builders and drivers, ranging from pristine showpieces to elementary machines meticulously designed for track performance. In our previous video, The History of Kit Cars Part 1, we delved into the origins of kit cars, exploring the early pioneers such as Thomas Hyler White and his collaboration with the English Mechanic magazine in 1896, culminating in the iconic Lotus Mark 7 in 1957. The team at Tea and Biscuits would like to express our deepest gratitude to all who have viewed that video. It was a resounding success as we marked the one year anniversary of the Tea and Biscuits channel. We also appreciate the valuable comments and suggestions received which have been incorporated into this and future videos. As we continue our journey into the history of kit cars, we intend to delve deeper into iconic models such as the AC Cobra and the Lotus 7. However, due to the abundance of online resources available, for this video, we have decided to focus on lesser known and lesser discussed models from the 1960s along with their builders. The devastation wrought by World War II left many already low-income households facing further financial constraints. Nevertheless, motoring enthusiasts demonstrated remarkable ingenuity in finding ways to fulfill their desire for speed. High performance and exceptional handling have always been the defining characteristics of a well-crafted sports car. However, achieving these qualities often entailed a significant financial investment. But, for those aspiring enthusiasts operating on a budget, kit cars provided an accessible entry point into the automotive world. One cost-saving strategy was thanks to the contemporary tax system. It meant that when sold as kits, they were no longer classified as vehicles but rather as spare parts. This reclassification placed them in a lower tax bracket resulting in a substantial reduction in their price. Unfortunately, this would come to an end in 1973 when the UK government changed its tax laws, introducing the VAT system. The rise in popularity of kit cars was also significantly influenced by the utilisation of inexpensive donor vehicles as a base. This enabled builders to incorporate custom parts alongside a low-cost kit, thereby creating a high-performance vehicle on a budget tailored to the driver's specific requirements. The 1960s has endured over the decades as one of the most iconic and influential eras in terms of popular culture, fashion and design. Music had transitioned away from the optimistic and resilient spirit of the 1950s to a more cynical and experimental tone, with rock and roll being supplanted by psychedelia. The prevailing mindset shifted towards questioning the zeitgeist, embracing experimentation, rebellion and counterculture. The design language of the 1960s is synonymous with simplicity and minimalism. Architects and engineers embraced modernism, resulting in the construction of brutalist designs that created concrete cityscapes. It was an era characterized by sleek suits, pencil skirts, and streamlined automobiles. With significant advancements in quality and manufacturing techniques, fiberglass or glass-reinforced plastic became considerably more accessible. This opened up a new realm of design possibilities for custom builds and kit car manufacturers. Numerous automobiles from that era have evolved into renowned replica kits, such as the iconic Jaguar E-Type. But let us now explore some of the more notable kits from that era, beginning with the fiberglass bodies by US manufacturer Devon Enterprises. William Elbert Devon Jr. was an entrepreneur and race car driver with a keen eye for quality. A former Navy member, skilled mechanic and gifted engineer, Devon taught himself the fiberglassing process and swiftly mastered it. During the late 1950s, his company gained a reputation for exceptionally well-built and meticulously designed vehicles. Initially, they introduced their Panhard model, followed by their inaugural kit, the Devon D. With moulds derived from the 1955 Scaglietti-bodied Ferrari 750 Monza, it is unsurprising that this car and its kit achieved such popularity. Enthusiasts could now enjoy high-end design at significantly reduced costs. Although not a Ferrari, the Devons were renowned for their exceptional finish and attention to detail. Costs fluctuated depending on specifications, but another advantage offered by Devon was the option to select wheelbase length. Typically, they would be 84 inches, a full 12 inches shorter than the E-Type which stood at 96 inches. 
This in turn resulted in enhanced handling and stability. The short wheelbase and streamlined body could be paired with a number of engines, including VW, Porsche, Chevrolet and others. However, Devin also provided custom kits to accommodate any chassis, enabling the utilization of diverse drivetrain combinations. Continuing with the theme of short wheelbase, streamlined and lightweight vehicles, the Mini Marcos emerged as a popular choice. As its name suggests, and was the case with many kits, this one was constructed around a Mini, utilizing its frame and running gear. A car celebrated for its engaging go-kart style driving experience and of which there was no shortage. The abundance of donor vehicles meant readily available spare parts and contributed to the reduced production costs. The original design was a hand-built, steel-bodied car known as the Dart by Desmond Dizzy Adicott. This first design featured a slightly longer wheelbase as it was constructed on a minivan. This proved advantageous during racing as it enhanced the car's stability at high speeds. The body drew inspiration from classic sports car design cues, adopting an aerodynamic teardrop shape. This design was then later rebuilt using fiberglass. The weight reduction achieved through this process resulted in a significant improvement in performance. However, an oversight during the process of removing the roof from the original donor vehicle led to an asymmetric body. Unbothered by this, Dizzy chose to continue working on the car and completed it. Later, when creating the moulds for the fibreglass body, the need for correction was overlooked, resulting in all of the subsequent vehicles being lopsided. At the time, Dizzy objected to their release, but what was once considered an error is now regarded as a distinctive feature. The car caught the attention of racing driver Jeremy Delmar Morgan, who acquired and took over the project. Subsequently, it found its way to Jem Marsh of Marcos, who developed it into the Mini Marcos. During its initial run, the Mini Marcos underwent five iterations, spanning from 1965 to 1970. The Mark I Marcos was the sole UK car to finish the 1966 Le Mans, achieving a modest 15th place. It was later revived in 1981 by DNH Fiberglass Techniques Limited, and in 1991, Marcos themselves reclaimed the project for a third run up until 1996. Another popular mini-based kit from this era was the GTM Coupe. The car was designed by professional racer and entrepreneur Bernard Cox, along with his employee and friend Jack Hosker. It was initially introduced in 1967 as a concept known as the Cox Grand Touring Mini, and later put into production by the Cox Brothers of Stockport, UK, under the name Fox GTM. Once again, this was a car that drew heavily from classic Italian sports car styling, in this case particularly, the Ferrari Dino. A mid-engine, two-seater with rear-wheel drive, this vehicle prioritised the sports aspects of sports cars, emphasising handling and performance. The vehicle featured a GRP body mounted on a steel box-sectioned chassis equipped with modified mini subframes both front and rear. Unveiled at the racing car show in January 1967, the car was priced at £330, equivalent to approximately £5,300 adjusted for inflation. Upon delivery, the body was already attached and the doors hung, but the remaining components were left to the builder's discretion. After producing only 55 kits, in 1969 the rights were acquired by Formula 3 driver Howard Heary of Midland Garage. Heary continued producing the kit until 1972. His interpretation, known as the GTM 1.3, included modifications to the chassis and some cosmetic features. With ambitious plans to establish a factory for delivering fully assembled vehicles, he ultimately sold 155 kits before his company's liquidation. The ride subsequently passed through various organisations until the 1990s, resulting in an approximate total of 700 kits being produced. Diverging from the conventional European style, the Opus HRF designed by Neville Trickett represented a unique 1960s kit that introduced a touch of American hot rod culture to the United Kingdom. It is said that throughout his 87 years on this earth, other than his national service with the army, Trickett never held a conventional job. A modern day renaissance man, he possessed exceptional talent in the fields of art, design, engineering and construction, earning a living through his craft. Throughout his life, Trickett dedicated himself to building and racing custom minis, known for their exceptional quality. In 1965, he encountered fellow racer Jeff Thomas, who was deeply impressed by Trickett's work. Their shared passion for minis led them to establish a company together, inspired by the American Hot Rods, specializing in the construction and racing of custom chopped minis. Known as the Mini Sprint, this vehicle featured a subtle yet effective 3-inch chop, giving it a more purposeful race-orientated stance. 
It is from this appreciation of hot rod culture that the Opus HRF emerged. With a classic tea bucket design reminiscent of the early builds of the 1920s, the Opus HRF was conceived as an accessible hot rod for the UK market. The same build and design philosophy yet employing readily available components. Embracing the Ford legacy, the fiberglass tub was mounted on a tubular frame chassis sourced from an Anglia or Cortina. Numerous mechanical components were also repurposed, ensuring an abundance of spare parts and easy servicing. A diverse range of engine options were available, spanning from a four-cylinder up to a V8. Given the rarity of hot rods in the UK, particularly in this style, they swiftly gained popularity and continued to be a fan favourite at events. Between 1966 and 1967, a total of 225 units were constructed. The exact number of surviving vehicles remains unknown. The 1960s marked a transformative decade for car design, characterized by a fusion of economic ingenuity, cultural influences and technical innovation. Builders embraced lightweight materials, allowing for greater design flexibility and performance enhancements. This era was defined by bold experimentation, blending European sports car aesthetics with American hot rod culture and democratizing high-performance car ownership. Signature models like the Devin, Mini Marcos, GTM Coupe and Opus HRF exemplified resourcefulness, creativity and the enduring spirit of the kit car community. Their legacy continues to inspire automotive enthusiasts, proving that passion and craftsmanship transcends generations. And with that, we bring this episode to an end. But don't forget, this is an ongoing series. In our next episode, we'll be looking at cars from the 1970s. So if you have a particular favorite from that era, or if there's a car that we missed out in this episode that you think deserves a mention, please let us know in the comments. Thanks again for watching. If you feel we've earned it, please consider liking and subscribing. If you've made it this far into the video, it's fair to assume that you are a fan of kit car culture. So please do check out the channel. In the meantime, I've been DJ Shorty, and this is Tea and Biscuits. Thank you.